Welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video, All in Crypto here, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about a project that is coming out of the Polkadot ecosystem that I am very interested in. And actually I could see huge potential for this project because it is addressing a real problem um, that we are facing in regards to the ever more digital world that we are moving towards, you know, with the rise of things like AI um, and with the continued need and importance of the internet the individuals, and by individuals, I'm talking about Google, Amazon, and Microsoft, uh, that basically enable the internet. They own the infrastructure that the internet is ran on. They also own, in most cases, the software uh, that the uh, physical infrastructure runs. You know, we're, we're moving towards a kind of danger of um, these companies becoming, you know, having unbelievable power as a result of what they enable and the infrastructure they're offering, and they're not being any real competitors to them. But this project that we're going to look at in regards to uh, coming out of the Polkadot ecosystem is essentially looking in the same way that Bitcoin looked to decentralize money, to decentralize compute. Now, compute is going to be like the oil of tomorrow. It's a very interesting world that we're moving towards, and we don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole. But what I want to do in this video is highlight this project, highlight the importance of a uh, project like this, in regards to decentralizing the physical infrastructure that the likes of the internet and the digital world is ran on because as it sits right now it's essentially three companies that um, own this infrastructure in the form of cloud computing it's also similar for data storage um, you know we'll talk about sam altman talking about five to seven trillion dollars that he wants to raise for the computing power to enable things like artificial intelligence if the only people that are able to run and have the most powerful um, physical infrastructure to run artificial intelligence are these companies, it really centralizes everything and gives a great deal of control to these three companies over the masses. Uh, and this is why I think the rise of DPIN is so important. It's why we've highlighted it as one of the most important sectors. We've also highlighted it as one of the ones with the biggest opportunities in the crypto space. The narrative is there, also the need for it, the problem, so on and so forth. But if we look at the likes of the cloud computing market, you can see this is roughly how the share is is broken up. And you can see Amazon owns about 31% of it. This was for 2023, by the way, the end uh, quarter of 2023. Just in 2023, Q4 alone, there was $7.3 billion that were generated as a result of this. You know, you've got Amazon, you've got Azure, which is Microsoft for anyone who's unfamiliar, and then Google, and of course, you've got Alibaba Cloud, IMB Cloud. But the three com there's really three companies that basically enable the internet. Uh, and they have a great deal of power as a result of that because... The physical infrastructure enables software, which is often very compute intensive. It's no coincidence that these companies are the largest companies in the world. You can see Microsoft, you can see Google, and you can see Amazon, uh, all in those top six spots. Um, and there's a kind of, not only is there like a, a need for us to decentralize things like compute, um, certainly in the digital world that we're moving towards, there's also a hypocrisy in the crypto space uh, in regards to the fact that the majority of computing that happens in the Web3 world is actually utilizing Web2 companies uh, and institutional hardware, even though the kind of ethos of this space was to move away from them. Now, the deep in sector is addressing this. It's coming up and incentivizing through tokenization the decentralization of compute. And I had Barney Mannering on. I don't know uh, if many of you saw that um, interview, who's the founder of Vega Protocol. He's also worked on stock exchanges. Very, he's a computer scientist. He said, um, you know, if you have 10 million iPhones, you can run a pretty um, impressive um, generative AI model. Um, and could you imagine if you had 100,000, uh, sorry, 100 million or a billion, you know, and these are just iPhones, let alone all the other hardware that's out there that people aren't using. And we can actually gain access to that through incentivizing people with tokenization. We can... Um, essentially democratize, decentralize, and uh, compete against the cloud lords. And this is a really interesting thing. It's an area that I'm certainly interested in. And Polkadot, of course, having one of the richest ecosystems in the entire crypto space, has its own um, uh, players in this field. And of course, we're going to be talking about Fala Network. Um, we did have some discrepancies with the tokenomics, but of course, they need um, to have... This is kind of how I've justified it, at least. The amount of tokens that one wallet has to essentially incentivize rewards. Why do you need tokens for this stuff? Well, for incentivization, if you didn't get Bitcoin for mining it, you wouldn't do it. Um, and, and that's the kind of genius of what Satoshi did. So 
this industry is huge. This, of course, was a buzz not that long ago. This is from uh, or what Sam Altman came out and said. Sam Altman's obviously OpenAI, which is Microsoft's AI. Um, seven trillion dollars in chips. Um, so he's looking for between five and seven. People always take the high estimates when it comes to the news. Uh, and he's essentially looking for this money to ensure the supply of computing power required for artificial intelligent development. And we saw Sora, which is going to be using uh, GPUs more than CPUs. This project that we're looking at, I believe, is predominantly CPUs. I, I, I'm really hoping to get them on the show to talk, and I'm sure you know we're going to enable that. Um, so with Sora and the, and the magic of that, you know, that's GPU intensive. If you look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA is literally a GPU play. And again, these companies that offer compute in the form of CPUs and GPUs um, and that offer a lot of the hardware in, in terms of data storage and all this stuff are the biggest companies in the world. And there's blockchain equivalents of those in the form of deep in plays that I think are gonna be huge. This is an opportunity you guys should not miss. This is gonna be bigger than DeFi in some respects um, and potentially less competitive. Um, so let's talk about the project that we wanna address. Again, it's very ironic that actually the vast majority of compute the vast majority of data that's stored in Web3 is actually done on Web2. These plays are evolving things. You know, we, we're going to release a video tomorrow where we actually talk about what Web3 actually is. And it's the combination of deep in, decentralized AI, decentralized software, like things like social networks, all this kind of stuff, um, smart contract platforms, money itself. You know, this is everything rolled up into one, what Web3 is all about. Um, but let's talk about the project that we have for you guys today. And of course that project is Fala Network. So Fala Network is a decentralized uh, computing system that do things in a very interesting way, which we're gonna dive into. We're gonna be looking at their, um, what is Fala over on their uh, documents. And we'll just be reading from that. Um, but you can see they're essentially calling themselves a co-process of blockchains. Right now they have 163,000 V CPUs, so I believe this stands for virtual CPUs, um, which is the computing system that they have. And this is the brilliant thing about these systems, right? So you don't need to build these server farms. What you need to do is find people that have idle CPUs and you essentially um, incentivize them through tokenization to contribute their CPUs to your network. And you can compete with the likes of these. If it gains traction right now, they're not, it's not really that competitive. It does provide an alternative. But essentially, you know, you can incentivize um, distribution, uh, or, or you can you can you can incentivize workers, and hopefully to the tune of rivaling some of these. All it needs is for one of these to take off and gain real traction, and actually for different economies to wake up. I've often thought, if you look at what happened with the agricultural revolution and what that did for labor, it displaced a lot of people. If you look at what artificial intelligence is going to do, it's going to do that. Is something like providing compute going to be a kind of economy of tomorrow? Um, that's a very interesting concept. We go way uh, deep on all this stuff in regards to IoT, in regards to blockchain seems to be a real key to the, 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 the futuristic puzzle that we're trying to explore. But let's continue on Fala Network. You can see who these guys are um, or what networks they're supporting. So you've got Ethereum, BNB Chain. Uh, or Binance Smart Chain, sorry. Um, you've got Moonbeam there, you've got Arbitrum, and you've got Star. Let's take a look at the networks. We'll come back to that in just a second. We'll let that load up. Smart contracts now smarter. We'll explore this idea in just a second. You can see the integration here. Fat contracts optimize co-processing for simplicity, accessibility, and impact. Um, you can see what's going on here. These are the people they're trusted by. You know, it's a very interesting project. It talks about how Fat Network works. Correctness, you can see the visual over here. Underneath it says Fat Contracts are deployed to the blockchain and assigned to the off-chain workers running inside secure enclaves. Anyone can check the signed transaction and secure enclaves remote um, attestation to verify that the executed code is the one published on the blockchain. Um, so they take things off chain. There's an area, there's an element of censorship resistance here. There's an element of um, privacy here. Um, you can see deep in with the most T nodes 
uh, by the people for the people. Again, goes back to this concept that I spoke about at the start. You can see the kind of GPUs they have. The FAT tokens talks about recent highlights. We are, I really do hope, going to get these guys on the show. Um, I have reached out to a number of them and I am in uh, some small talks. Um, but this is a very interesting project to come out of the Polkadot ecosystem. Let's dive over to their website on their Fala Network docs and actually just read what they have for us. So this is the supported chains you can see. EVM blockchains, very impressive. Uh, they've already got quite a bit of integration. This is their What is Fat Network to give you a broad overview from the horse's mouth. They're going to explain it far better than I can. Computation as it's meant to be. So What is Fat Network? Our mission, Fala Network is revolutionizing Web3 by providing dApp developers with an off-chain compute infrastructure that is truly decentralized and trustless by connecting smart contracts to our off-chain program called Fat Contracts. Developers can supercharge their dApps with seamless cross-chain integrations, connectivity to the internet, and heavy computation. Fat contracts make your smart contract even smarter and can be integrated in minutes using our no-code developer experience, Fat Bricks. So this is really important. One of the main barriers to entry with Web3 is the development side of things. Um, I talk to a lot of gaming companies. Uh, I do think GameFi is going to be huge, just to take you on a little tangent here. And uh, one of the big beefs that these gaming companies, they want to use Web3. They, they see the law of it or the allure of it. Um, the problem that they have is paying somebody who know, you know to, to to integrate this stuff whereas the gaming crypto companies that i speak to what they're really focused on is providing apis so they don't need to do this um little side note so that's a a, a good thing uh, as far as um Polar Network's concerned in, in regards to the no-code developer experience. That's brilliant. Um, so Web3 developers are constantly pushing up against the technical uh, limitations of building on-chain. Modern dApps need to be more than just smart contracts to support rich feature sets. And as Web3 has evolved and matured, it has become clear that effects, um, sorry, efficient off-chain computation will be vital for the number of standard DAP use cases. Fala gives DAP developers access to powerful off-chain services without compromising the pri uh, principles of Web3. This is computation as it's meant to be. Furthermore, in a digital landscape that is becoming increasingly centralized, Fala Network, stuff we spoke about at the start of the video, uh, seeks to go against the grain by building a compute network that anybody can provide for and build on top of trustlessly. In other words, Fala is public, a public good network. I, I like that. Uh, trustless computation, verifiable results. Fala network is designed with a multi layers of security guarantees to provide fully verifiable computation. Anybody with the correct hardware can become a compute provider, i.e. a worker for the network and earn rewards. And the FALA has an array of mechanisms in place to ensure workers always carry out computations faithfully and securely. Tokenomic incentives, hardware-based assurances, and cryptographic, um, <coughs> excuse me, evidence of uh, execution published and verified on Fala's blockchain enables fat contracts to seamlessly extend blockchain level securities to the off-chain realm. Supercharge your dApps with fat contracts. It goes to talk about a number of things, how you just connect the API interface with any uh, S3 storage platform. We are coming up with decentralized storage as well. Compute over data, automated small contracts, etc. Uh, so on and so forth. So this wasn't by any stretch of the imagination, a um, in-depth guide into Fala Network. Really what it was, was to highlight it to you guys, um, to show you at the start the problem that they're trying to address. It's a real problem. It's a real issue. Um, and how markets should work, we know we're in this weird world at the moment, is that you create value out of solving problems. And this is kind of what I see Fala and these other deep in networks doing in regards to compute. Do we want to end up in a world where the internet is essentially ran and AI systems are essentially ran by three companies? Or do we want to move to a world where actually there's competition, you know, that ensures kind of a level of decentralization and fairness or, or at least competitiveness that comes with it. So you don't end up with these monopolies that ultimately can push agendas like what we've seen with some of the AI models. 
you know, Gemini had that interesting thing take place. Um, you know, it's anyway, I don't want to ramble on for too much longer. Guys, that is Fallen Network. Very interesting project to come out of the Polkadot ecosystem. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. If you've enjoyed the content, like, appreciate it, as a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next.